With Witch Queen just around the corner and many destinations going, now's the perfect time to grab a few exotics and build up around them the upcoming Void 3.0 change. We have 3 exotics that you should have your eye on for your classes as these here will not only become meta but game changing to a large degree. Here is my top 3 Void builds that you want to have on day 1 and what you can create out of them with a few of the aspects and fragments already shown to us. To start with the first build, we have the non-stop invisible Graviton 4 vid build that will give you near 100% uptime for going invisible. With the massive change coming to how Hunter's invisibility skill will be active, this one is also will become dominant in all activities considering how it will give you a big boost in melee energy and allow you to flawlessly pass through multiple combatants without them noticing. To make the best build around the exotic, you won't have the following as a basis. Have the Arbalist equip this so that you can bypass all types of shields with ease and a bow of your choice so you can do a large amount of precision damage at a safe distance. The Point of the Stag Bow or the Wolf Tone Bow are two great examples I can bring with you for whatever content you have in mind for how hard hitting they are. You'll then want to have at least 90 to 100 mobility as we are currently using top 2 Void for the Vanishing Step ability but this can be swapped out to smoke bombs instead or even split stats 50-50 as we know we'll have multiple ways to go invisible. Mod wise, you'll then want to have protective light equipped just in case things go bad on your end. You'll then also want to have the linear fusion scavenger mod so you can get more ammo more often, the powerful friend mod for that mobility stat bonus and a reaping wall maker mod so that every time you dodge and get a kill, you'll produce an elemental well. This is the most basic but straight up best build you want to have if you ever go solo or in groups as you'll never need to worry about always being in harm's way and you're harder to track and kill. Now although Bottom Tree Void is getting a slight nerf, the rest of the subclass seem to be making a major comeback to how they work and you'll not want to miss them. Having Vanishing Step will turn your hunter invisible while dodging and then combining that with Stylus Executioner where defeating a void debuff target, which can be weakened, suppressed or volatile, grants invisibility and true sight. While invisible and after Stylus Execution, your next main attack weakens enemies. This will allow you to become a ninja who can melt through Luke and Hive if you pull off the following. You can even add in Echo Provision where damaging enemies with grenades grants melee energy or Echo of Undermining where Void Grenades weaken enemy to the mix of things so that while you're invisible you can keep weakening targets to gain the upper hand on them. And I'm telling you now, this build will become nutty come Witch Queen and we get a bit more other customizations added to the mix. Now for the next build we have the Warlocks who have become the shining beacon of hope when it comes down to team support or wiping out horse and combatants in one go. One build that many fans are familiar with is the Top Tree Controverse Hulk build. With this setup, you'll be charging grenades to do a huge amount of damage upon impact and then you'll be getting energy back to the point of you being able to do it all over again. Whether rain or shine, this build is so destructive that you can destroy a champion's health in mere seconds and the mods that work with it can make the build even more better than ever before. Now for this to work, you'll want to have a high discipline stat of 90 to 100 and have as many grenade energy boosting mods around to further support this area. For example, Elemental Ordnance will allow you to produce wells upon kills which will then trigger Bountiful Well for more wells to be produced, to which you will then trigger Explosive Well Maker mod for the Void Explosion so even more wells are being made, which will then trigger the Front of Might mod for a 25% weapon buff, etc. Simply put, if you want to use wells non-stop, which will be useful for both you and your allies, then this is the build you want to carry, and if you want to throw grenades with all sorts of damage attached to them, then this is also the same build you want to carry. Now we don't have a full list of aspects for the works just yet, but you can easily make a quick setup around the following build doing so. Chaos Accelerant will allow you to hold down the grenade button to overcharge your vortex, action bolts, scatter and add magnetic grenades. Combine that now with the child of the old gods where casting your rift you summon a void soul and you get a debuffing monster damage dealer all in one where I can see being useful come the raid or even nightfalls. It may even make GMs even more doable with less risk involved. Lastly we have the mighty titans and let me tell you, you're in for a treat. I believe there has been a new fragment or aspect shown that allows titans to throw a miniature shield at combatants as if they have bottom tree super available. Now upon seeing this, I had a wild idea that this will be something we unlock straight away 
or something we look at a later date. And with how simple it is, I remember there was one exotic that worked really well with it, and that was the Doomfang Pauldrons. As shown on screen, the build will be yielding you super energy by the bucket loads for each mini kill you get, and within your super, you can retain it for longer by carrying on and using your super more and more. I aim to have around 90 milli and back this up with the Monte Carlo for further support of maintaining this projectile, and then adding on the hands on mod for more super energy, mini well maker for creating wells, mini kickstart for getting some more mini energy upon using my power version. Bountiful Well to gather more wells upon activation, and Invigoration combined with Radiant Light to extend my melee usage. We also have the Well of Tenacity added in for extra protection, although that can be easily swapped out for Protective Light if you have one. It's simple but very powerful build that will let you easy kills and become dominant against Luke and Hive. We can of course expand on this by applying the Echo Explosion Fragments where Void Ability kills cause enemies to explode. And then we can combine both Control Demolition, where hitting a target with a Void Ability, or Volatile Detonation will make them more volatile. And then adding in the Offensive Bulwark states that, while you have an Overshield or inside a Wall of Dawn, grenades charge significantly faster and you have increased melee damage. You also gain an additional Shield Throw for your Sentinel Shield Super. You overall get a combination of Middle Tree and Bottom Tree in one, and there are of course more to it once they do release some others. So there you have it, three unrelenting but powerful builds that allow you to dominate Witch Queen once it touches down. There will be more like this, but now this should give you a rough idea as to how to survive the unknown, and of course we will revisit this in the near future, or basically until Witch Queen comes. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny news and content. Once again, thanks for stopping by, I'll see you on the next one.